So just an overview, Peter did an amazing job of going over everything regarding the white space spectrum and what's the spectrum, the white space, everything that's going on. Um, I am the first person to completely admit that I'm not an engineer. This is not my specialty. And this was, this was a big homework assignment and it was a lot to learn and a lot to go over. Um, but in a way, it was really good for me to do, really good for Zach's common general to do. And it makes me feel good about our product offerings going forward. So everything I'm presenting is pretty up to date as of Friday afternoon, um, confirmed by FCC representatives. And we're really on top of trying to provide customers with everything that they need to know when they need to know it. Um, just to go over it once again, there was this auction. We lost a whole bunch of space in 600 megahertz, specifically 614 to 698. Um, other TV stations are gonna go lower and take over the 500 band, and what the FCC is calling it is the 600 megahertz band plan. So this is a small chart of everything above, you know, between six and 700 megahertz. Everything in the blue is where it's legal to operate, and I just did that in the Zaxcom blue because it's pretty. The um, channel 37, of course, which, you know, just in case you guys aren't familiar with Saxcom, we sell things in a 0.5 <coughs> band. This is talking about transmitters. Our receiver, our QRX200 is wide band and it covers blocks 20 through 26. So transmitters you can always order as a 0.5 or a 0.6. The 0.5 covers blocks 20 through 23, our traditional blocks, and the 0.6 covers blocks 23 through 26. So this is actually really about the 0.6 block. Um, UHF bands, the channels 35 and 36, those are covered in both of our 0.5 and 0.6 series. It's a little bit of an overlap. Even though we say that we cover up to 614, that's really for all the models that we export. Um, you know, because in Canada and the rest of the world, they don't have, that's the radio telemetry and the um, astronomy folks are in that channel 37. That's why it's in the yellow. So whenever you buy a 0.5 or 0.6 right now, when it gets shipped to you in New York or wherever you live, that's already blocked out in software. Um, going forward, we've got this guard band, which is that little tiny space, and the duplex gap. Now those are where, if you currently have a 0.6 model, you can still use your wireless microphone. You are not totally out of the water. Um, so again, these are the portions that are available. There are 300 me three megahertz in the guard band, 11 in the duplex gap. So if you have a 0.6, or if you, I wouldn't recommend buying one, but if you were to buy one, you still have this space available for you right now. Some of which is, we were, uh, Peter was mentioning the um, licensing, if you have that part 74 license. So in the guard band, you can, you're all on license, but in that duplex band, if you have a license, you can use 10 megahertz. If you don't, you can only use the six. And remember that that six is also shared by white space devices who can use the 40 milliwatt power output, whereas we're limited to 20. Um, this is the guard band up close. So that, um, that one single megahertz of green, that's unavailable for anyone to use. That's kind of just the little blockage for each person. This is the duplex gap where we've got six unlicensed that anyone can use and four licensed. And remember the people with the license can also use the unlicensed area. So if you've got a license, you can use a lot of extra space. Um, this just talks about it a little bit more. Operating below 614, um, the 0.5, again, you're completely unaffected here. The um, TV channels that are down there have no change for us, but because people in the 600 range are moving down lower, there will be a lot less space to be used going forward. Um, like I was saying, if you've got a 0.6 band, what's going to happen in the future is the places that are illegal to use, we are going to cut out in software. So you will require a software update. And again, most likely a new, like um, Howard was saying, like we'll send out some new sticker that you need to put on your unit. And it'll limit you to those spaces that are legal because we cover that entire 100 megahertz range, you know, standard. Our 0.5 stuff, there's absolutely nothing that changes. Um, Zaxcom has different modulations. Specifically, if you have a point, any of our three series, which is our LA3, the brand new ZMT3, we've got 
I mean, you can go on our site. There's a whole lineup. Um, the, newer, the newest stuff works in all of our modulations. XR has been our standard when we came out with our wideband, and then just recently we introduced ZHD. There are two different modes of ZHD. There's ZHD 96 and ZHD 48. Uh, the difference in them is how close you can space your equipment together, and also um, the delay is a big thing for some people. I mean, it depends on your job. The um, ZHD 96 has a six millisecond delay. ZHD 48 is 18 millisecond delay. Now, you're gonna ask why would you use XR? Why would you use ZHD 96? Why would you use ZHD 48? Um, we invented ZHD specifically for these concerns and for the, you know, because there was gonna be less space. It's a different narrower modulation. So you can fit a lot more channels closer together and they can work really well in ref reflective spaces. XR modulation will probably get you better distance if you've got line of sight. So that's, that's the main difference with them. So this is how ZHD falls in terms of the spectrum and what's gonna be available in that 0.6 band if that's where you're working. We've got from 596 to 608, there are 11 megahertz there, no restrictions. Then you've got that tiny little guard band of two megahertz. You've got the licensed portion of the duplex band of four megahertz and the unlicensed portion, which is six. So. This is the amount, I'll show you the formula in our next slide, but each megahertz, of, each megahertz of space can hold really a lot of channels when you're using ZHD. So from 596 to 608 alone, which is unaffected by the spectrum, you've got 11 megahertz. So if you're using our oldest modulation or if you've got our older gear like the um, AA's or even the two series products, you can fit 21 channels in that space. If you're running ZHD 96, you can fit 54 channels in just that 11 megahertz of space. And in ZHD 48, which again, that'll depend on if you can deal with, you know, depending on how you work, if it's a live program or a theater show or something where it's totally fine to have a little bit of delay, you've got 109 channels in just 11 megahertz of space. If there's ever a question of how to get, you know, the amount of channels, say you are given a job and you're like, oh, I can work here. I'm given six channels. The formula is if you're using, for example, ZHD 96 and you've got six megahertz of space, it would be six times five, which is 30 minus one. So you've got 29 channels available. Um, or in this, for example, four megahertz range, you've got 39 channels. Or in the, just that little tiny gap of two megahertz, you've got nine channels of wireless in ZHD 96. Um, so what's next? We're not really making any change to our 0.5 series. There's no need. You've got 100 megahertz wide of space, so with 100 megahertz, if you're using ZHD 96, that's 100 times five, 500 channels minus one. You've got 499 available channels of spectrum. So one would hope that you'd find at least a couple free for your wireless. Um, we can also retune anything in 0 0.6 to 0 0.5. I'm just going to grab my water. Um, we know that this is stressful, and we're reassessing like the reblock prices right now. But we did. We're basically running a special if you want to do it in the next year. This is only for the three series, so it's the LA3, the ZMTs. <coughs> Pardon me. Anything in the 0.6 can go to a 0.5 or $175. It's pretty fair. It's just the labor, the parts, and turnaround time is pretty quick right now, but I have a feeling it won't be for long. Um, the rule goes into effect October 18th, so you will definitely have to have it in before that point. Otherwise, we will issue software for the 0.6 folks so that you could use those smaller gaps if you'd like to. Um, Again, check the white space database using your proper FCC information, and we will have a learn, <coughs> pardon me, set up page on our website going up this week with kind of just a breakdown of everything, like the history, again, the calculations of how to see how many channels you can use, and um, yeah, what to, what to know going forward. So that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of it. 
and I should mention our wireless records built in. So if all else fails, it's recording. <laughs>